This video is brought to you by Draeger's Classics. This is Andrew and Jana in the 67 Corvette getting ready to leave Sun Valley and heading back to Seattle. We took the Corvette to Old School Garage for the service and safety check and then to Rich's uh, custom upholstery put the carpet in it and I'm bringing it back home now, back to the clubhouse. Hi, I'm Jerry Drager, Drager's International Classic Sales in Seattle, Washington. We're here at Drager's Clubhouse where I want to show you this 1967 Corvette Roadster that I bought over in Sun Valley, Idaho. It's had the same owner since uh, about 2000, 2001, right in that area. Anyway, he after he bought it, he was lived back east, and he he spent a lot of money on it. He bought he bought the engine that's in this thing. Uh, it's a uh, high performance uh, 383 monster engine or something like that. puts out about 480 horsepower. Thing runs beautifully, and it's got a late model. Uh, five-speed transmission in it so it's really smooth and nice and uh, the only thing we've really done to it we've serviced and safety checked it and uh, the bumpers were kind of tarnished on it and stuff the original bumpers and we put new bumpers on it so those are the two things we did and you can see the I mean it's just it's a neat car windows roll good Doors close nice. You know, it's got this top on here, uh, soft top only, and it's an old top, and it is not in great shape. In fact, you can see right over there on that corner over there where it's ripped a little bit. Uh, I haven't done anything with it. Uh, it. This top, for me, would last me years because I put. I never like to take them out with the, the top up at all, so I'm always driving them with the top down, and all I need it for is an emergency. Uh, type situation but you can see it's got the stock wheels on it but you know it's not stock so if you're looking for a matching numbers car don't look any further because it's got the wrong engine and it just uh, set up well to, to it's a driver it's a pro touring it's got a different power steering set up on it it's not the original power steering that they came out with so it uh, has that going for it too so there's a bunch of things on it that's not stock See the doors close good. Let me open the hood up here so you can see this uh, engine in here. This has, I don't remember if I told you, but it's got air conditioning. It's got vintage air on it. I have a feeling there's not a lot of miles on this uh, engine. This is a car that I don't think has been driven a whole lot. It moved to Sun Valley and, and he probably drove it a little bit and stuff. I don't think there's a lot of miles on this thing. This thing just runs great. Uh, and, and of course, it's got air conditioning on here. It, we have power steering. It's not the stock power steering setup. You'll see that in the underside photos, what it looks like up from the underside. Uh, we've got the MSD ignition setup on here. And we got an Edelbrock carburetor. We got an Edelbrock intake. This engine in 2002, brand new, cost him ten thousand two hundred dollars I don't know what it cost you today so they only made a limited number of the this particular engine it was made by an engine outfit back in New Jersey who made it and uh, they they just I guess <laughs> the five-speed transmission just really sets it off now the air wasn't working when we got it so we had to uh, 
We took it in to have the air work, get working, and they found a bad spot in the radiator, so they ended up putting a new radiator and cruise fan on here, so that's all good. And the other thing is, uh, this alternator was on here, was making noise. It was, it was just no, kind of noisy, and, and we, I didn't like the sound of it, so we put it, and it was chrome also, so we just replaced it with another new chrome deal. And you can see here, if we'd have cleaned on here a little bit, uh, we, you can see that it shine up nice and stuff, but you know overall it's in, it's good solid clean car. Just drop that hood and it just closes nice. And I mean again you can see these bumpers are all real nice. I mean there's some fit in here issues that don't fit as good as we'd like. This is a kind of a typical crack in a Corvette. I can see something right here a little bit in the paint. And there's a little spot along, right along there. I don't know if you can see it very well. And there's another kind of a half moon type thing. I mean, so there is some imperfections in this, in the paint. Paint, but you know, overall, a lot of the paint's pretty decent on it. It's not even close to show quality paint, but I gotta tell you, it looks pretty decent to me. I mean, I'm not trying to sell it as a perfect car by any manner or means stock wheels on there got the side exhaust on it and of course got the 427 hood on it it just they look neat I mean it doesn't it was not a 427 car originally or anything along those lines so I think you'll see that it just uh, I'm kind of looking for spots you know I mean there's some chips in the paint right through here a little bit uh, the fit you know the fit could be a little better right in through here on stuff uh, so if you're looking for that perfect fit car, this is probably not the car for you. If you want something fun to drive, I got to tell you, Andrew drove this thing all the way back from uh, Sun Valley, Idaho, and he, he loved it. So Andrew, we were over in Sun Valley when I bought this car, and you and Jana drove it home. Tell me what you thought about the drive. This thing drove excellent. I mean, it coming down off the mountain, 6,000 foot elevation, got to come down the pass into Boise and we were passing cars and having a lot of fun. I mean, it, it, it's got the side exhaust and it sounds good when you're passing people. You probably scare them and you can drop it down into third gear and you can you can rev this thing way up and it just goes. Uh, I don't know what I'd do in third gear, but you know, I dropped it down in the third several times and just blew by cars. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun to drive and, and, it, and it drives great. I mean, going through Boise, the speed speed limit is 80 through there and I had the speedometer at 90 and I think it's a little fast but you, it, you could take your hands off the steering wheel and it'll just drive straight down the road and it's it's just a nice driving car lots of power it's like you're driving a big block with that 383 stroker and the five speed and the clutch and everything works great I mean it, we drove it 700 miles and it it drove great I mean it's it's a blast to drive it's better than than most Corvettes that you'll drive so I had a lot of fun. Thanks, Andrew. I just wanted to get his idea because he's driven it a lot. We like to drive our cars, so and I haven't driven this very much. I've got about five or six miles on it, so I don't know how well it runs and drives. And also, I don't think he went through Boise at 80 miles an hour, but the state is 80 miles an hour before Boise and after Boise. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, gas cap right through. Right there, of course, there's a spot right in here. It's got this long scrape in here in, the, in it uh, that doesn't uh, look good, but it's there. And I just, again, I'm still looking for things on here. Uh, that, you know, it's like here, this fit here could be better. You know, there's just some of this fit here could be a little better. And again, that's what, if you want a show car and a 100 point car, now that should just look perfect. It, it off matches here just a little bit. So those guys out there, you're, you're, you're fussy about this sort of stuff. You don't need to look at this car. If you want a neat car to have fun with and drive, and it's very comfortable, and fun, Andrew will tell you how well it drives. I want to show you this book on the 67 Corvette that we got with it. Of course, old school garage is our receipt for what Joe did. But as you can see, there's just a lot of stuff in here. This is the old Corvette way back uh, many years ago. And 
just thick with receipts. And of course, this is the one I really wanted to show you. This is a collector's edition Chevy 480 horsepower street stroker engine. And they only build a hundred of these. There are only 26 left at this point in time. And, and just something else. Uh, you can see it's all in this book. This is a five-speed transmission <clears throat> right there and you, that went into it. And you can just see that this thing is thick. Some of these folders have got a whole bunch of receipts in them. There's the power steering setup right there. And just the clutch setup. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff in here. This thing got a whole bunch of stuff in it. I mean, there are just a lot of receipts for you to look at on this 67 Corvette. We're going to take the top up and down. One person can do this car, but we just want to do as fast as we can. You have clips up underneath the, the visor here to uh, undo and get those loose. And back here, you got these clips, and sometimes they can be a little bit of a hassle. You got to pull them ahead. And then the top comes up here to this point. And you reach under there and lift this up. And then this whole top, if you got the latch unhooked like I didn't, <laughs> it'll just drop right down on in here. Sets right down in there just fine. And you close the lid. And the top's put away. To reverse the order, it's the same thing. You open up the lid, lift it up. I mean, it's just simple and easy. They work really easily. Let's take a look at the interior on this car. Now, as you see, it's uh, blue with the uh, white interior. Looks good. Uh, door panels all look really, really decent. Got the wood grain steering wheel in here. These seats were pretty dirty when we, uh, we got it and we've cleaned on them, and they're not as clean as I'd like, but uh, they look okay. I mean, if you want them fresher, you could get new upholstery on them, but. This is a driver quality car, so you don't have to worry about it too much. You can see there's how this is. That might even clean off a little bit, it may not. Uh, you see we got the, the dash pad across the top here. All looks real good. Glove box door looks good. Clock, of course, it keeps time. Uh, it's got a quartz movement in it. That's the reason why it keeps a good time. The gauges all look uh, real good across here. You know, everything looks decent. Now the carpets down here, we put new carpets in this. And these are the old floor pads and they were the same color as the old carpet. You can see why I wanted to take them out. And so we put the new carpets in here and it just looks so much better. I, uh, I think you'll find that this uh, car the way it is is, is gonna be a great driver for you. We got heat and air, we got a radio. I don't even know if it works, we'll check that out. It's also got a switch on here, on the, you can see right here. That's to uh, lock the uh, front brakes up so you can, uh, like a drag racer would do. I don't know, I've never used it. Andrew's tried it, so he knows how it works and everything. You see we got sound system, there's a speaker right here too on each side. So you got some speakers in here, so you, the sound system should be fairly good. Actually, I think, if I remember right, that's why, because we got a sound system in here with the remote. This radio isn't doing anything. It's just filling a hole. So they put all this in here, and probably the glove box went away because they put air conditioning in, in on this car. Now, to open the back hatch, there's a lever right underneath here. All you got to do is pull on that, and it lifts up. I'll pull these seats ahead. And you can see the backs of the seats. This one's got a crack in it right here. And you can see this all new carpet. And of course we got uh, speakers in here. And Andrew informed me that the radio doesn't uh, work. It's got power to it, so, but we don't know anything about, oh yeah, might as well look, lift this out for you. Because here's, there's your jack, there's fire extinguishers. There's even a wrench set in here. How about that? So anyway, you got a few things in here. Uh, I have, we've never looked in there before. Rich did, I guess, when he put the carpets in. And of course, to, you lift the top out and it comes right up. And you can see we, he, Rich has uh, replaced all the carpet back here. Underneath here, you can see that this looks uh, clean and nothing fancy or anything. 
So, you know, everything looks good on this car. And these top screws go right down in here so nice and easy. And just close it. You see this door panel is all in good shape and everything, the handles and everything, door lock, cranks and everything. There's a little pitting on there, I see. This door panel is just like the driver's side, good. This might even come off. I'm not, we have not detailed this car or anything. I mean, this is just the way we bought it, other than cleaning on the seats and the new carpets. This is the Vintag right there, and you can see everything looks good. I want to show you how the instruments work and everything else. The AMS gauge was not working, so we took it in and to get it, uh, we were going to replace it, but what it was, it wasn't hooked up. So, uh, as you can see, when you pull the lights on, it, it drops down. And you can see it goes up the, it charges. We got a new alternator on here, so it's working good. And the gas gauge, you can see, it doesn't have a lot of fuel in it right now. Uh, you can see we got 92,535 miles on here now. And the pack works good. And you can also see the oil pressure working. And of course, we've had it out driving it, so the water temperature is up good. Let's show you how the air works. So to turn the air on, you just push this knob right here, and to get the air on, you got to pull this out. That's for cold temperature. Now we just had this on, so it's probably not super cold yet, but you can see uh, it'll start going down here in just a little bit. You can see it's going down, and we had it down to 38, 37 degrees. So you can see how it works. And you just push this in, turn this off. We're going to show you how the headlights work. So you have a switch right here underneath the dash, and you just pull it towards you, and the lights will rotate up if you watch them there. And then when they get up, you just let go of it, and it'll stay there. So. There's your park, oops, that's park lights, headlights, high beam, low beam. This is the wipers. And the wipers, we should have checked to see if there was fluid in the, but it works when you push the button, but no fluid comes out. So I don't even know about it. We'll take a check on that. And the horn honks, turn signals, left side, right side. So that all works. And then of course to close the headlights, you just push this button and they rotate down. And Now let's check out the uh, rear lights. So there's the tail lights, brake lights, left turn signal, right turn signal, and reverse. Sometimes just sitting here, it doesn't want to go in real easily. There, we got reverse. Oh, well, there you go. Everything works. The bottom of this uh, Corvette looks uh, really good. Now, I never pulled this loose to look up in here, but I can feel the spare tire in there, and it's got a lot of tread on it. So I don't know what kind of shape it is or how old it is, but it looks good. You can see this sway bar right here. It looks like it's been replaced. Now we're at the rear end. Where, of course, you see we got this big leaf spring here, which is stock on here and of course we have disc brakes on both front and rear on these cars and it's of course an independent uh, suspension that's a stock Corvette uh, independent suspension system on here and all this uh, these floor pans all look good in here of course they're fiberglass so what else is it going to look like but when you get here to the frame the frame looks good I didn't see any signs of rust anywhere on this frame it's it's clean this car was originally, uh, I saw an invoice or something, or a, it lived in uh, Pennsylvania for a bit, and then New York, and then uh, I, the, Robert, the guy I bought it from, he lived in Connecticut before he moved to uh, Sun Valley, Idaho, and that's where I bought it, of course, it was in Sun Valley, Idaho. And, uh, 
I got the original block with this thing too, so we've got that uh, going. And I mean, everything looks real good here. This frame on here, even though it came from uh, the East Coast where they have a lot of rust issues, you know, how many people are gonna drive a Corvette in the wintertime anyway? So I think that's probably why this frame all looks real good across here. I mean, all this looks good. Here's your drive shaft in here. I can see it's uh, fairly new. Uh, and of course, we're getting into the uh, front here where we have the uh, five-speed uh, transmission in it instead of the original four-speed in here. You can see the custom amount for it. And it, it's a big transmission though. It goes way back. And I gotta tell you, it shifts nice. The clutch works so nice and smooth and everything. And again, we look out here at this frame out here. You can see everywhere I look, it's good and solid all the way across. Same on that side over there. It's all good and solid. Everything looks good that way. But look at this belt housing on here. <laughs> it looks like a, a uh, heavy duty. I mean, I never seen anything with so many nuts and bolts uh, and big bolts. They're not small, they're big bolts. It's every other one. There's a big one, a small one, a big one, a small one. And then we got an Allen wrench right there for some reason or another, a big one and a small one, and they're just big. You can see this little starter motor in here set up. That's one of those, this is one of these real torquey uh, uh, gear drive starters. And uh, so it, it starts it just fine. And again, I'm looking at this frame all along through here. This all looks really good. And here's the bottom of that, the 350, excuse me. It was a 350, I'm sure. Anyway, it's a, it's a 383 uh, engine pumping out, what, 480 horsepower out of here. So it, it, it's healthy and it runs good. And look at this power steering setup on here. It's a heavy duty setup on this car. I mean, this car just drives really well. It's good and solid. Again, I, everywhere I look, I don't see any, any issues anywhere on anything. That side over here, you can see the part of the steering mechanism here. It just, uh, it's all heavy duty all the way across. This front end underneath here, of course, there's a stock front end underneath here, and everything looks good and solid all the way through. It doesn't, uh, you know, again, I don't see any frame damage anywhere on the frame. Again, no rust issues from that standpoint. Uh, it, it, this radiator you can see here, it's brand new. We, we put that in there and the cruise fan right here is new. We, went, we took it in, the air wasn't uh, blowing cold and so we wanted to get it working and the radiator had a leak in it that it was in it and so uh, we, had, we installed a brand new radiator and, and a new cruise fan on it and stuff. So that's all real good. This again, all looks good. Everything Everything's decent under here. It's not a showpiece, but it's good and solid and it's clean. Andrew started a little while ago, but it's been a while since it started. Probably a couple hours. Yeah. So it's it's really cold. So go ahead and start it. Let's see how it starts. <laughs> Andrew's warming up the engine right now before he revs it. Well, we're going to go down the freeway now and see how, or show you how well this thing runs and drives down the freeway. Neat car. 
we're heading up on the freeway now. This will give you a good chance to see this car wreck going down the freeway. It runs quite well. I'll step on it right here. I want to pull back. There they are in fifth gear. I mean, we're just barely cruising. Look at there, 1,500 RPMs. Shows 55 miles an hour on the speedometer. Look at there, I'm doing 56. We're doing about 57 on the uh, speed, actual speedometer. 54, 55 right there, so it's pretty close. This just gives you a good idea what it looks like going down the freeway. Okay, now you get to see the uh, right side of this uh, Corvette. <laughs> Sounds pretty, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, it gives you a good chance to see it going down the freeway. I have to tell you, this Corvette, even with all the horsepower it's got on it, it's actually pretty smooth. I mean, it, it's got a little bit of a lumpy cam in it and everything else, but it's just like right here taking off on it. You know, the clutch works good. It shifts really nice. And it just, you know, it's not wild. But I want to tell you, as soon as you step on it, it goes. So this Corvette is not for just anybody you gotta be up on your toes and you gotta want something with a lot of horsepower in it and if you don't want that and you want a totally stock one then you need to look somewhere else this is not the corvette for you now it's really lumpy right through here all this road construction going on and it's really bouncy but you can it's not a rattly car it's good and tight to get an idea about this Corvette. It's, it is a fun car to drive and it's got horsepower so uh, you gotta make sure it's a car you want and if you're all interested give us a call. Make sure you uh, come and see it in person. That's the best way. I'm Andrew Drager and if you have any questions about this vehicle please don't hesitate to call or email us. I'm Jerry Drager and we're a father-son team and we hope you enjoyed the video and understand that we really try really hard to go over the vehicle with this video to show you everything doesn't mean that i get every single spot or anything else but i try and andrew and i both work really hard to make sure the vehicles are in top shape before they leave here you got any questions always give us a call or email us. We'd be more than happy to talk to you. We really invite you to come see them. And if you can't, you should have them inspected. I think it's really important to make sure you understand what you're buying.